going through the questions why I want to explain again why I go through these questions because uh, these are concepts many people may not have and uh, it's very important that we learn this and be able to apply it in our teaching uh, some people they learn this and then they show me the teaching and then I said you haven't learned it yet you haven't talked about God's grace yet you still talk about what people do what people do now we do talk about what people do but we don't start with what people do we start with God's grace and His love, His work, what He's doing to help us before we go to any idea. That way, we see that God is in control of everything. We just fit into His plan and then we're okay. So in order to help us all to be able to apply this to our teaching, that's my purpose. It's not just for the people to hear the lecture, hear the message, and then they, and that's it. No you need to practice it so only those who can submit to me that you can answer these questions at least uh, part of them that you at least answer part of them to show me that you understand how to motivate people by grace uh, to obey to obey the word of God and then I will I will see and then also write uh, you can write sermons and then I will I will see or let Washington see first uh, because some of you might not be able to send it to me and then you see it and then see if the person is is understanding first talking about God's grace his plan his wonderful things his wonderful work before we talk about the responsibility of people and how we can have strength from God to fulfill our responsibilities because all the ministry belong to God all the ministry belong to God it's God who does the ministry so we need to just fit into God's plan. Okay, now what we're going to talk about here is enter God's perfect plan for our lives. So this is the third part of the teaching. So according to Psalm 139, 16 to 17, how is God's plan for us? Now the verse I did not put down here, it's that before one of the days of my life came to be, my life is already written in your book. And then how precious are your thoughts O oh Lord that that God already has his wonderful plan and his thoughts are full of uh, you know his plan is full of precious thoughts so how's God's plan for us God's plan was made ahead of time it was made ahead of time for us secondly it was wonderful plan they are precious thoughts and also God can make the plan come true if we follow him love him obey him and serve him the plan will come true and when the plan will come true, our whole life is blessed. So everything I talk about God. First, God loves us. God cares about each individual. He has a plan. And this plan is wonderful. And this plan is workable. He will make sure it comes true when we trust in Him and obey Him. And then wonderful things will happen to our life. And so from this God's plan, what nature do we see? We see God's His ability to plan. His care for people, His ability to, um, of administration to be able to apply what He plans to our life. And He would tenderly lead us to enter God's plan. So He's very patient. Even though ma uh, many times we did not obey Him, He still patiently leads us. So when we understand that, then we'll say, don't worry. Uh, for instance, when I have any problem, I'll say, God has a plan. No problem. Uh, it will, uh, God's plan will come true. I just obey Him. Everything will be okay. Okay, number two question. Do people enter God's plan automatically? How do we enter God's plan? Romans 12, 1 to 2. I did not put down the Bible verse here. That Bible verse is that we dedicate our whole life as a living, body, a living sacrifice. And then... Uh, uh, not, do not conform to the world, but be transformed by the renewal of our mind. Then we can discern the good and perfect and pleasing will of God. So what it says is that in order to enter God's plan, to discern His plan, first we dedicate our whole life, offer our body as a living sacrifice. When we offer our body as a living sacrifice, many sacrifice many people do not want to offer their life to God they said if I offer my life to God I have nothing left 
then God will not treat me nicely, nicely then, but if I follow my way, I can earn more money. But actually, we have no guarantee. But if we follow God, God will provide what we need. So we don't need to worry. God's plan is the best. Because many people don't believe God's plan, plan is the best. Many people believe their own plan is the best. But we are human. How can we have a wonderful plan? But when we dedicate our body as a living sacrifice and do not be conformed to the world, do not follow the way of the world to follow money and chase after women or men uh, or get reputation or get power and then be renewed in our mind by God, then we can start to discern God's wonderful plan and then gradually when we obey Him, we can enter God's plan. And His plan is the best. One day many people go to heaven and say, I didn't know God has such a wonderful plan. I did not enter the plan. It's my loss. So I hope we all enter God's plan. We just have a good relationship with Him, trust Him, obey Him, serve Him, then gradually we'll enter a better and better plan. Now, serving Him doesn't mean everyone is a minister. You can be doing different kind of work, but still you glorify God when, whenever we can, then you are serving God. Number three, please explain the concept of plan A, B, C, D based on Romans 12, 1 to 2. Now, this any concept I have is, is based on Scripture. I cannot make up my own plan, my own ideas. <coughs> In, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> In Romans 12, 1 to 2, it talks about when a person dedicates his life to God, offers his body as living sacrifice and do not be conformed to the world and be renewed of, uh, by the trans uh, renewal of the mind, then they will enter the plan. So when we dedicate our life to God, then we'll enter the plan. That means when people don't offer the body of a sacrifice, when they follow the world, when they don't, their life is not transformed by the renewal of the mind, then they cannot enter the best plan. The best plan God wrote for us is the best thing that can happen to us. But many people did not think of it, so they missed that. But if we follow it, then we can obey God's plan. Now in the Bible, we can see different people. They've, some people follow God's plan. For instance, we see Joseph, Moses, uh, Samuel, David. Now David failed in one point when he sinned. Of course, he has failed more than one point. Every one of us has failed in more than one point. Uh, so when people obey God, then they serve God more. They, they follow God more. And in the Bible also, there are people who have failed in many ways, in a number of ways, like uh, uh, Samson. Samson, the, the one who was very strong. And uh, his life could have been better if he did not fall into the traps of women. So he did not go into the perfect plan, but he still go into a level of the plan. So we, if someone follows God totally, when he first believes in Jesus, he'll be in plan A. If he sin or are weak in some way, go to plan B, C, and D. If he repent and turn back to God and obey God, it will go back up. But it's not easy to go back to plan A. The reason is, it's not that God doesn't want us. It's because sometimes we lose the time. Sometimes we lose the reputation. Sometimes we lose faith when we have sinned, when, that we don't have a peace of mind. So whatever it is that we sin, uh, that we did not follow God, it can take away from this perfect plan. So the more, the closer we are to God, then the closer we are to plan A. I hope we all can enter as close as possible to plan A. Everyone can enter plan A if we totally dedicate our life to God. Uh, if we dedicate our life to God early, if you wait until you're 80 years old, it's hard to follow the perfect plan of God because you have lost a lot of time already. Okay, question number four. According to Isaiah 58, 14, when we delight in God, what will, uh, what will He do for us? That He will make us ride to the high place of the earth, that will we'll go higher and higher. So when we delight in God, we'll enter this higher plan of God. This plan was already written. It's, it's already there for us. It's just whether we enter or not. It's all planned for us. 
Number five, what happens when people follow or don't follow God's perfect plan? Now, I want to first talk about who don't follow God's plan. Now, some people, they, they, ask, they ask me, they say, how come I believe in Jesus? And in my family, there's fights. There are fights and maybe there are divorce. My children don't listen to me and I'm unhappy. I have emotional problem and the church has all kind of problem. And I have problem in the church. I have problem with uh, friends. I have problem in jobs. Now, these people, some people have problems in every area of their life. The point is, where, where do this problem come from? Do this problem come from God's planning? God doesn't plan terrible things for us. God planned the best. The reason is, people don't follow God's plan. They don't have, they don't have a close relationship with God. They don't put down the burdens, their worries, uh, the negative thinking, negative emotions, and the sins, and they just follow the flesh. That way, they will not be connected to God, they're close to God, then God's blessing will not come to them. And then they will have problems. So the whole life will have problems. But when people follow God's perfect plan, that's guaranteed life will go better and better. Now, better and better doesn't necessarily mean rich, but there will be sufficient for us that our life can go higher and higher. So the perfect plan means that our life will go in a perfect path that we can bless more and more people we ourselves are blessed, so I hope we all would hunger for this perfect plan of God. Okay, and then the fourth uh, lesson, do not let anyone destroy God's plan for us. Now, many people are affected by people and uh, because people around us have sins and we have sins too. So everyone has sins and so we are affected by people. So these are some questions. Why do many people have the tendency of being critical with people and hurting people easily? So we first we need to understand human nature. The Bible said, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So everyone has sinned. That's why people get angry with people and are critical and they like to compare, like to hurt people, like, like to take advantage of people. That's human nature. Even among Christians, do all Christians really love to bless people? Some people say they want to, but the action is not doing that. But if we really love God and say, if I love God and love people, that's the best that can happen to me. When I love people and love God, then God sees that my heart and He will bless me and my life will go higher and higher. That way, they, will, they would uh, be willing to take care of the problems in their life and not to let anger or frustration or criticism affect their life. I'm one person who really want to take care of my life so that my life is not affected by any kind of sin. That my life is going higher and higher up. I just want to bless people without condition. I just want to help people without condition of expectation or paying back. I just want to bless people. And God bless me so much, I don't look for anyone to pay me back. I do it all for free and I do it happily. So uh, I want to get rid of this tendency to hurt people and criticism. I want to be positive, uh, positive, joyful, and full of love. And I hope you all hunger for that. Now, at the same time, there are people, many people who are, have a tendency to hurt people and criticize people. Then we accept they are like that. When they're like that, we don't have to be affected by them because they are sinners. I want to bless them, but they are sinners. So they have no choice but to hurt people. Many people, they always follow the sinful nature. They have no choice but to hurt people, always hurting people. So we understand that people do hurt people, so we don't take them seriously. But we care about them, we love them. Number two, when Joseph was sold by his brothers, humanly speaking, have his brothers taken many things away from him? Now, it seems that, humanly speaking, so I put down here, humanly speaking, yes, humanly speaking, they have taken, taken many things from him because he had the favor of his father, that he was treated nicely by his father, and so immediately he was sold as a slave, and he has to work very hard. So immediately, humanly speaking, his brothers took many things away from him. But on the long term, he got all of the things back and even more. Because in Egypt, finally he became the prime minister and then he 
has everything more than before. So his brothers really did not take away anything. It's only in the beginning. But later he got everything back. According to Genesis 39 2, the Lord was with Joseph, Joseph so that he prospered. So how was Joseph's relationship with God when, when he was sold to Egypt? Was he affected by his brothers selling him to Egypt? So his brothers sold him to Egypt. But then the Bible verse uh, Genesis 39 2 says, The Lord was with Joseph so that he prospered. Now he was very difficult because he did not know the language of the Egyptians. He has to learn the language. And, but he did not complain to God. Now, he might have complained a little bit. And then after a while he repented. Now this is only a possibility. I think humanly speaking he would have complained. He would have been in fear. He would have been in worry. But immediately when he come close to God, God might have spoken to him, guided him, and tell him, don't worry, I have a wonderful plan in your life. Just follow my way. I will take care of you. So he must have a good relationship with God that the Lord was with Joseph. Because the Bible doesn't talk about someone who rejects God, who criticizes God and blames God, and God will feel him strongly. The Bible doesn't talk about that. The Bible only talks about people who love God. And then God blessing is on him. God's presence is on him. Now, God's presence is on everyone, but many people reject him. So God's presence doesn't bring blessing and doesn't bring change of life. But for Joseph, his presence, the presence of God was strong upon him because he has this continual relationship. So it was his continual relationship that he took care of the problem of his brothers. So this session here is about don't let anyone destroy God's plan for us because if we get frustrated or angry because of people, then we lose these blessings. But if we say, doesn't matter, what they do cannot take away God's blessing. Now, that's very important. I have been hurt by people before, and I have to say I have hurt people too, sometimes unknowingly, sometimes knowingly in the past. But now I choose to really always blessing people and never have a thought not to bless people. So, and then when people are not nice to me, I would just say, that is his problem. I don't want to take that into my heart. I don't want that to affect me. I want to trust in God and relax in God and don't be affected by him. So um, he was not affected by his brothers and his relationship was good with God. So that's Joseph, a good example of someone who really follow God. And then what do Genesis 39 2 and Genesis 50 20 say that God did to Joseph when he was sold by his brothers. Now in Genesis 39-2, it talks about that the Lord was with him, with uh, Joseph, and then the Lord prospered him. And then Genesis 50-20, that Joseph, when his brothers came to him later, and then his father died. And then Joseph said to his brothers, your intention was to hurt me, but God in God's intention is to bless me and to bless everyone for the benefit of many. So God's, God's plan is to bless many people. So that means when people hurt us, they cannot really hurt us. When we trust in God, when we obey God, they can only hurt themselves. But when we follow God, God will bless us and take away all the things that people did to us. It won't affect us. So it will tell us that uh, God will always do wonderful things to us even when people don't you know, hurt us and when we trust in God, God will always do wonderful things to us. And then number five, applying Joseph's experience, can people take away God's plan in our lives if we love and obey God? The answer is no, because when we trust and obey God and love Him and serve Him, then we are precious in the sight of God. We are precious in His plan. He will make sure that we can go higher and higher to bless more people. So nobody can take away God's plan. So we have this guarantee, nobody can take away God's plan. And then number six, do what people say negatively have authority? Uh, why are so many people affected by negative words? How can we stop being affected by people? So when people say negative words, do these words have authority? It sounds like they have authority. When they yell at us and say, ah, oh, I don't like you, it seems that they have authority. But actually in God's sight, they have no authority. 
It's only like Satan roaring. Satan has no authority. We have authority when we trust and obey God. But why are so many people affected by negative words? Because people just don't have this biblical concept. The biblical concept is that God's plan cannot be destroyed by sinners. That God has a wonderful plan stored in heaven for us. When we trust in Him and obey Him, dedicate our body as a living sacrifice, then we will enter this plan and nobody can take away the plan. Even when people try to attack us, if we just follow God and, God and obey God, they cannot hurt us. They cannot take away God's plan. But many people are affected by negative people because they don't trust in God. They just look at people with the human eyes. With human eyes, they will say, uh, these people are hurting me, these people are terrible, and then they will get discouraged, and then they would uh, lose strength. So we don't want to look at people with a human perspective. We want to look at people with a biblical perspective. That is what we need to do, biblical perspective. How can we stop being affected by people? We understand that God is in control of everything. We trust in God and obey God. And we choose to forgive, have compassion on people and forgive them and bless them and not to be af affected by that. If they say anything negative, we say, it's okay, no problem. They won't be able to take away my blessings. And then we, uh, then we can stop being affected by them. And then we'll talk about that uh, later in this discussion here. Seven question. Why is it important to clear the garbage from negative words and action of others and ourselves? What can this garbage do to us if we don't clear them? Now, people are not garbage, but the negative words and negative actions are garbage. They are used by Satan. When people roar at other people, they yell at other people and hurt other people and do things to hurt them, this is garbage. But, uh, this garbage, and also we have our own garbage. We say, oh, I'm useless. Uh, people are hurting me. I can do nothing. God is not helping me. Now, this is garbage. Sometimes people are affected by other people and they are affected by their own negative emotions. So this needs to be cleared. How do we clear this garbage? When, whenever we have any negative thoughts and say, oh, someone doesn't like me, then immediately we have to counteract that with God's word. God likes me when I love God, when I obey God. God likes me. God is pleased with me. God will bless me. Even when people don't like me, it doesn't matter. They cannot take away God's blessing. When someone uh, rejects us, it's no problem. I will still bless them, but God re uh, accepts me. God will use me, so I follow God. So just look at God. God is pleased with those who love Him and obey Him. It's very simple, very simple. God is pleased with those who love Him and obey Him. So we love Him and obey Him and serve Him, then nobody can take away anything. So I disregard any negative words. I would, I would handle it. I would say, okay, these people want to attack us. It's okay. Now, if I have anything wrong, I'll ask for forgiveness. But if I don't have anything wrong and these people attack us, then we'll say it's His problem. I just pray God to help us to forget about it not to think about it and just keep praying for him keep thinking that you know he has been affected by other people so he has been hurt and so he hurt people so i want to bless him have compassion on him and bless him and forgive him so i can let go of his negative words and action okay now if we don't clear this garbage what will happen many people have this problem they will they would feel very sad, feel very angry, frustrated. They give up on life. They say, nobody likes me, even God doesn't love me. Now, actually, it came from the garbage, came from the people. People mistreat us doesn't mean God doesn't like us. It's only people who uh, mistreat us. It's not God. So we have to discern. We have to discern the, is the problem is from people. Okay? So how can we clear this garbage? We counteract. The garbage with positive words of God. That God loves me, God wants to bless me, God is doing great things in my life. So, um, so, we, uh, uh, so we say it doesn't matter what He says, it doesn't matter what He did, it won't take away the blessings of God. Now I have been, some people have tried to cheat me, but I say, okay, they have taken some money from me, but God will give it back to me. It doesn't matter to me, but to Him it's terrible. I hope, I pray that He will repent. 
and I send message to this person I say please come to God in repentance if you haven't used the money for God and use it for your own purpose then it's for your destruction it's very serious so I advise him uh, peacefully uh, kindly to ask him to think about what he has done and to me I don't think about that as a loss I don't I haven't lost anything so we want to clear the garbage and not to keep thinking about the person okay now please describe the five steps to victory and describe how you use it after someone yell at you angrily now these five steps are aware of the problem aware that I'm affected by people and believe that is destructive and what does the Bible say tell me to do and then pray for forgiveness and and for strength and then choose to obey so if someone yell at me first I'm aware I'm affected by the person when a person yell at me I would have some uh, hurtful feeling and then destructive I know that is destructive and then what does the Bible say the Bible says that when I'm loved by God you know what can people do to me that I, I, I don't have to worry if God is for me no uh, no one can be against me what can people do to me I'm not afraid so no one can do anything against me so what that's what the Bible says I don't have to worry about what they do and what they say and then I pray for forgiveness if I have any worry any doubt any fear and also also pray for strength so that I choose to have compassion on the person he has been hurt by people therefore he is angry with people therefore he yell at people so I have compassion and understand him and forgive him and bless him that way I let go now but some people cannot do it quickly so I have this point that God gave me if we improve by 1% a day what will happen after many days 100 days we have 100% 50 days we have 50% if we improve by 1%, 1% is a very little. We just improve a little bit. Today, I can start to praise God. I can start to put down what He said to me. I can stop thinking about what He did to me. I can start to thank God for everything He has done for me. Then I'm improving, and very often more than 1%. And then so how can we encourage ourselves with this concept? That we encourage ourselves by saying, I have improved so it's God's work in me and I'm obeying God and so I'm improving and God is happy and God is blessing me and I will go better and better so whenever we have improved we always can appreciate ourselves now that is not pride it's saying God is working my life and I responded thank God for that thank God for changing my life then <clears throat> I have obeyed God and God will appreciate me and God will remember that I've tried to obey him <clears throat> And God will reward me so I can be happy of myself. Hallelujah. But I'm not proud. And I hope everyone is like that. So that's positive attitude. So that's how briefly how to handle the how uh, people sometimes are affected by other people. Now, if you have questions about this, you can send me questions and then I will answer. Send with WhatsApp. Okay. And then fifth lesson, have victory over all sins with God's help. So today I go through the, uh, the main lessons. Uh, so have victory over all sins with God's help John 5 14 Jesus said to the man uh, who was Jesus healed him of 38 years of sickness and then Jesus said to him stop sinning or something worse may happen to you so here Jesus said if you sin something worse will come to you now this is telling us when we repent of our sin when we ask God to forgive us it doesn't mean there is no consequence of sin there are consequences of sin there is there are, there is destructiveness of sin even when we get the forgiveness of sin for instance someone kills someone he asks God to forgive him God will forgive him and give him eternal life he's really sorry if he's really sorry for God for I mean for his sin and ask God for forgiveness then God will forgive him and give him eternal life but he has to go to jail or he might have to face a death sentence now if someone uh, he has an affair his wife runs away from him then now he can ask God for forgiveness but his family is broken 
Even if his wife comes back, there's still a broken relationship, broken hurt feelings that that could stay in the heart, in the heart of the wife for a long, long time. So any sin, even after forgiveness, still have bad consequences and still have destructiveness. So we need to understand sins have destructiveness. So the questions are, after God forgives us, will sin bring any kind of damage to our lives? Yes, it will bring damage. It can bring damage to the whole life. Now, some people, they, you know, they, uh, their family, the marriage is broken, the ministry is broken, the trust with people are broken, they have no more friends, they, when they go to church, nobody likes him. So, everything in his life, his work, he, he has no trust, his whole life is broken. So, it can damage his life to the utmost. So, we need to be very careful not to let sin affect us. Okay, why is there damage after forgiveness? Because Sin, now God forgive us is a relationship with God. But still there is a, a the, the sin affect our heart, affect our peace, and affect people's trust of us, affect relationship with people, affect our opportunities of work, of our opportunities in the church, our opportunities in ministry, our opportunities in the future. Like for me, God gives me opportunities to bless many people and I, He has given me many good teachings. I want to guard my life. I don't want anyone to take away, I don't want any sin to take away uh, any good thing from God. So I am very careful to guard my life. And so if I commit a serious sin, I can still have forgiveness and eternal life. But it could destroy my ministry and the trust of many people. And also many people will feel very disappointed that they say, well, Pastor, Pastor uh, Yip has failed. Uh, uh, okay, this pastor is calling me. I tell you, uh, I'm on. I'm online now. I cannot answer the phone. I'm online now. I'm online now. I cannot talk on the phone. I cannot talk on the phone. Okay, you have to send me written message. You have to send me written message. I cannot respond on the phone. Okay, number two. Uh, I'm sorry. There are still some other questions. Why is there damage after forgiveness? I just answered that. Even after forgiveness of sin, are there consequences of sin? So I said that, yes, there are consequences of sin. Two, when we sincerely repent of our sins, will God surely forgive us? Now, if we sincerely repent of our sin and trust in Jesus as our Savior, He will forgive us. When we have this continual relationship. Now, there are some people like this. They, they repent of the sin, they, they're sorry, they try to change, but then they don't have a living relationship with God. They don't have a living relationship with God. Now the thing is, he who has the Holy Spirit has eternal life. That, that he is a child of God. So when we have this relationship with God, some people just say sorry and they try to handle their sin for a little while and then they sin again. And they keep sinning without repenting and without a relationship with God. Without relationship with God, then he cannot have eternal life. The relationship came from relationship with God, trust in Jesus as Savior and the relationship with God. And uh, it's, it doesn't come from changing our lifestyle. It doesn't come from just repenting and changing the lifestyle. It came from the relationship with God, trust in Jesus as our Savior. How do we know that He will surely forgive us? It's from the Bible. The Bible promises that when we trust in Jesus, that He will give us eternal life and He will forgive us. So we can be sure of that. And we can tell people, yes, you can, you're forgiven. Now many people doubt and worry about God's forgiveness, but we want to be sure God forgives us. It's a precious gift. It's a precious gift. I have eternal life. And